Today we are going to be mounting a 50 inch light bar on my truck. So let me explain what I've done so far. I, that piece of duct tape right there in the center is marking the center of the windshield. And as you can see, as you can see on the light bar itself, I've also put a piece of duct tape signaling where the middle of the light bar is so I can just line those two pieces up. Then I've built this contraption between two ladders to help support the light bar. And so the light bar is just going to be resting on top of this. I've put the level on the center there so I can make sure that the level is in the right place for the light bar. So the light bar is going to be level when I mount it. This is just held up with wood, duct tape, and some scaffolding. And now I'm going to set the light bar in place on the top. Now the light bar is in place positioned where it needs to be. I'm going to put the level back in front of it just so I can make sure that those boards always stay level. So right here, this is how we're going to design the brackets for it. So from the top corner, we're going to screw the brackets in right along here under the frame of the truck. And it just has to extend enough so that we can screw into the side of the light here. So the metal has to be at least six inches long. And I'm going to kind of curve it to go with the lip of the metal here and then bend it out just a little bit so that it'll fit. So bend it out, angle it out just a little bit like that so it'll mount with the edge of the light bar itself. Now if you bought a shorter light bar, you'd have to angle your bracket in and then curve it up. I've seen some of those with like the 40 inch light bars, but since this one's 50, just a little bit longer than my truck is, we have to bolt it, angle it, straighten it, and that's it. A lot of cars will have similar seams or creases in the frame on either side of the car. So this crease right here is the exact same on the other side. And so you kind of use those to reference where you want to place the metal bracket to hold up the light. So my is just going to go just a little bit over this line. And I'm going to make sure that it goes over the same distance on the other side to keep it universal. Right now it's bent perfectly so that the curve of this won't ever touch the bottom part of the bracket. And I'm going to mark where I can bend it up so that it'll connect with that where it bolts into the light. Right about there. That'll give it enough clearance for this and allow it to bolt into that. So now I just need to bend it up so it's parallel with this bottom part down here that mounts into the car. When you're choosing the correct drill bit for the bolt that goes in the side to hold up the light, you want a bit that will cover up all of the threads. You can see on this particular bit you can see some of the threads up at the top and the bottom of the bit. So we're going to go ahead and switch to a bigger bit. And that'll make it so that the screw slides right inside the slot without gripping on the threads or destroying any of the threads. Now I can drill a hole in the side of the mount since I have it all pinned up against the truck. This is just like a rough placement right now. When I finally put it on, I'm gonna put a bit of caulk in between this and the bolts so that no water or anything will seep inside. And plus I gotta paint it and trim it so it doesn't look like it's just a piece of iron. Now I'm just gonna trim it down a little bit so it'll match with the curves of the truck perfectly so it'll sit flatter against the truck. Now I have the light bar bolted in on this side and right now I have to get this 
hole lined up so that the light is, on, is level from the top and it's pointed straight forward. So how I'm going to do that is to level it you know, up and down with the ground and with the truck is pretty easy. I just need to raise and lower the light bar until that little bubble is right in the middle of the level. So it needs to go up a little bit on this left side. And then as far as pointing straight forward, I'm just going to make sure that the gap between the windshield and the light bar itself is uniform on the whole side. And so I have to do that both at the same time while I'm getting this in place to figure out where to drill the hole on this bracket. Now before I install the finished bracket in place, which is this guy now that it's all painted up, I'm going to take some clear silicone sealant and just go ahead and like put it on all of the little holes. That way it won't leak and it won't get water inside of the truck. It'll help kind of weatherproof it a little bit. Now the silicone's in place and I can go ahead and install that bracket. The mount is installed. Super sturdy. The reason I use a couple different kinds of screws are because even though these are both two inches, they're slightly different lengths. And I wanted to make sure that the nuts on the inside were able to stay on. So you can kind of see the nuts right there. And the reason I use these two darker screws right there because they're a harder grade of screws. They're more durable, but they didn't come in the two inch length that I needed. And those ones as well are just tied in with nuts there in the back. So on the wiring harness, this end right here with the black and red cables, this is what attached to the ground, which is somewhere on your frame, and then this attaches to your battery terminal, and then these ends go inside the cab. That end right there connects to the light bar itself, and then this end connects to the little switch that turns the light bar on and off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these ends and stick them inside. In the firewall, there's a little hole inside of there. You can see that I already have one wire coming out for my car alarm. And so I'm just going to take both of these, stick them through that hole, and then they'll end up inside of the cab underneath the dashboard. So as far as wiring goes, I mentioned before that I came back out through the firewall, and then I screwed this on just to a mounting bracket, just, you know, that something else was mounted onto. And then I have the grounding screw here that some of my other things, like my stereo and HID lights, are grounded to. And then I just took the power and just wired into the power terminal of the battery. And as soon as you do that, this guy will turn red. And then you can just press the button and the light will turn on and off. So as far as the wiring for the light goes, I just drilled another hole in the cab, a little bit bigger than the cable. And I've also siliconed that, as you can tell. And so the silicone is going to keep the water out. Not the most beautiful job, but I can clean it up in a second. On the inside of the cab, I have that big black wire coming down here. This is for my car alarm. And then I've connected the wires there, ran it down underneath, and I'm just going to clean that all up and then stuff it up underneath the firewall. And the switch, which is what turns on and off the lights, I'm probably going to mount just right down here, kind of out of the way, because that light is going to be on all the time, and I don't want it just blinded me. So I'll just have it down here where I can just reach down and click it wherever I want. Surprisingly enough, the weather stripping actually went back on, even though those nuts and bolts are in place. So the whole thing is still going to be relatively quiet and waterproof because the weather stripping fits on. If it wouldn't have fit, I would have just cut it here and here and left the weather stripping on either side instead of right there where the bracket is. Alright, so now for the cotter pins on the side. I assumed that this would rotate fairly easily, but actually when you clamp these down, I actually have a locking washer inside of here as well and one on the other side. When you clamp it down, it actually holds it really tight. So I'm not super worried about it. But the cotter pin idea was that I could take a cotter pin, a really long one, and just stick it inside of that hole right there. 
and then as it goes into the hole, it'll go through the sides in the heat sink. Just like that. I can't really see it from the camera angle, but it's going right in between these little fins right here. And since there's one on this side and one on the other side, it's going to keep it level. Straight up and down or whatever position I angle it at. So I can take the pin out, rotate the light down, and put the pin back in. Obviously with this camera you can't tell a whole lot because it doesn't pick up all the lights from the headlight. But you can tell a huge difference when the 50 inch light bar is on. One more time in a cemetery, so you can see that the normal headlights can show about, you know, about three headstones out. And then with the 50 inch LED light bar you can see quite a bit farther. If you're interested in buying a 50 inch light bar, I've linked that down below. The one I bought was about 250 bucks, so pretty cheap. That is it. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video if it helped you, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.